What's up, everybody? So, you guys know that my um, son Elisha is now born. He's about a week and a half. We're going through a little bit of a trial. Not not a big one, just a little bit of a trial. And I'm not gonna say all the details, but you know he's been on uh, formula. But we wanna we wanna do more breast milk than formula because we read that breast milk is the best milk, which makes sense because it rhymes. Um, <laughs> but we're trying to get my wife's milk supply rolling so that she can have abundant milk supply so she's trying to get used to it and it's a little frustrating and we're praying about it and god answered me um with two answers he put my mind on a couple things he put my mind on 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 the miracles of christ christ always met a physical desire of someone using something that also has a spiritual lesson let me show you guys an example the blind man the blind man he could not see right the blind man could not see and so what christ did is he took some dirt he spit on the dirt he made mud he put it on on the blind man's eyes told the told the guy to wash his eyes and then and then he could see so we have Christ meeting a physical desire of someone but it's connected to a spiritual lesson Christ never wrought a miracle that does not have a spiritual lesson connected to it what is the lesson being told with the blind man remember I think it was Paul or Peter in the New Testament where it says that the wicked are the children of the dark, the children of the night, and the, and the righteous are the children of the day. Why? There is something during the day that you don't find during the night, and that is light. The sun, the most powerful light in the world. And what did, what did Christ say? I am the light of the world. So if you don't want to be blind anymore, spiritually, you got to find the light of the world, which is who? Jesus Christ. That's the spiritual lesson. There's a physical desire. Christ meets it both physically and spiritually. What about the um, turning water into wine? There is a spiritual lesson. There's a sp spiritual connotation. Turning water into wine. Where was he in a wedding? Is there going to be a wedding in the end times? Yes, there is. There is going to be a wedding in the, in, the, in the end times. That's in the book of Revelation. There's going to be a wedding. The, the marriage feast. What did Christ do? He turned water into wine. What is wine? Remember, Christ shed the blood. His blood is the wine. Remember, he says, My flesh, bread of life, my blood, wine. This is the wine of the new covenant. What is wine? It means doctrine. There is good wine, new wine, which is fresh uh, grape juice, symbolic for sound doctrine. And then there is the doctrine of um, the harlot of Revelation 17. What was she carrying? Revelation 17, the harlot. She was carrying a cup full of wine, the wine of the wrath of her fornication and abomination. Abomination, that's false doctrine. Wine. Wine. You see what I mean? There's going to be new wine, the wine of the new covenant, the blood of the new covenant, Jesus Christ, in the marriage feast. So, again, Christ met the physical desire of the people, not only physically, but also spiritually. Every time Christ wrought a miracle, there is a spiritual lesson. Christ never wrought a miracle that has no spiritual lesson in it because the spiritual lesson is the most important even though yeah there is a physical desire of someone you know the, the, the sick of the palsy what did christ say the the second thing that, that that christ said was get up and walk but the first thing that he said son thy sins be forgiven thee spiritual need and then when that spiritual lesson, that spiritual need is applied 
then the physical takes place. Do you see? Christ never wrought a miracle without it having a, a, a spiritual lesson. So what does that mean about breast milk? <laughs> what does that mean about breast milk? Well, again, we prayed about it. God answered with two answers. He said the exact same thing I was saying. I'm saying right now. He said, what is the, the spiritual lesson that I want to teach you right now, Jan? He's telling me. Just take a look at the roles. Jan, I'm the husband. Shira is the wife. And we have a newborn together that we need to feed. Okay? Look at the roles. Jan, husband, wife, newborn. Biblically and symbolically, who is the husband symbolically in the Bible? The true husband is Jesus Christ, who is the wife. Ephesians 5 verse 25, husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church. So the, the wife is the church. The husband is Jesus Christ. Who are the newborns? Those who are born again Christians, baptized, baby Christians. So we did our research. My wife did her research. She researched, she Googled it. She said, how can we increase our milk supply? You know the, the, the three things that came up? The three things that are very important? What she needs is food, water, and rest. So that she can get abundant milk supply. Food, water, and rest. And I'm telling God, I'm asking God, what are you telling me here? I know that this is a physical desire that we have, but what is the spiritual lesson here? Well, let's think about it again. Let's look at the roles. Who is the husband? Jesus Christ. Who is the wife? The church. Who are the newborns? Baby Christians. How were the baby Christians fed? Those who are born again. You know how they were fed? Did you know that Christ had to feed the church first? Christ has to, had to feed the church first. Christ is the bread of life. Christ is the bread of life. Fed the church the bread of life. Gave the church the water of life, the living water. Gave the church rest. Gave the church rest. Do you see? There's a spiritual lesson. Christ gave the church the bread of life, the living water, and rest. And in turn, the church then gives the same spiritual lesson to the newborns. Those who are baptized, baby Christians, gave them the bread of life, the living water, and rest. What was God trying to tell me? He said, think, Jan. Christ gave the church food in order to give the newborns food. Christ gave the church water in order to give the newborns water. Christ gave the church rest in order to give the newborns rest. See, that, that's a spiritual connotation. Now the, now the physical. I need to do my part as a husband to feed my wife food, give my wife water, and make sure that she rests. I need to do the work. Make sure she rests. Make sure she has food and water and she will begin to get her abundant milk supply. Do you see? Again, Christ never wrought a miracle without it having a spiritual application because the spiritual application is the most important application. The most important lesson is the spiritual one, not the physical one. The physical is just the manifestation. The spiritual is the core. That's the, 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 the second answer that he gave me. The first answer is, just have faith in me and I will give you what you need. Reminds me of that song. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I've needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Praise God always. I'll see you guys next time.